Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Mike with Trayburn's RV Center here to congratulate you on your XLR Hyperlight XLT 3212 toy hauler. I'm here to walk you around the unit, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration. On your campsite, of course, your awning. You need plenty of room for that to come out. And over here on your off campsite, of course, your slide. Leave room for that to come in and out unhindered, preferably nothing hanging over top of it and leave yourself a nice walking space. I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are gonna be. They are gonna be right at the front on your driver's side of your tow vehicle or off side of your camper, off camp side. Power here, water connections there. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, first thing you do after unhooking your hitch is level your unit. They have a power tongue jack here, night docking light, simply raise or lower the unit to your level. Underneath this rubber stopper is a manual override for that hand crank so you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery posts when you arrive. Make sure those have a wiggle loose coming down the road. Once we got our unit level, next thing you do is stabilize it. All four corners of your unit, you have these stabilizing jacks. Three quarter inch hand crank. Now you can use an impact driver or a drill gun on these. I just recommend when you get to the bottom, you slow down. Because remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You're only going to want to run these down just until they're taut. As I run it down, I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, top black top of the summer, better distribute the weight. Really good investment with your 10% off coupon. Grab a four pack of those, put them down underneath these feet, and run these down just until they're taut. That's it. Once you feel any resistance here on your hand crank, go ahead and stop. You don't want to change the levelness of the unit. You just want to get it nice and sturdy. So you got one on all four corners. Go around, run all four of those down. Once we got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Come around your off camp side toward the front again. Here's your 50 amp cord. Big long cord there. At the end of that 50 amp, should you need it, is a 50 to 30 amp producer dog bone, they call it. And if you need to plug in at home, you can go from 30 down to 110 with this adapter. That's power hooked up, let's hook up our water. At the campsite, you're gonna hook up the city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. Always use this when putting fluid into your unit. Hook up to the city water connection. Hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Go right up here to your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point, making sure our drain plugging rod is back in. Throw a little plumber's tape around there. Get that in there nice and snug, and then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. After your hose has been out for a while, we are level and stable. You can go ahead inside and deploy this slide. Open up your water taps. After all the air is out of your line, your water taps got steady water flowing through them, shut them all off. And then you can turn on your hot water heater indoors. There is an on-off electric element right here. The only time you ever want to turn your hot water heater on out here, as well as indoors electric, is when you're hooked up to 110. 
up here reset buttons if your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working look to see if these are bubbled out if they are simply press them back in and then up here your pressure release valve all right let's say we're going to go camping we're not going to hook up to city water we're going to go boondocking in that case fresh water connection hook your hose up to here the way to tell when this is full is go inside and where you check the levels of your battery and black and gray tanks there's also a fresh water button hold that button down when the tank is full go ahead and remove your hose and then to use that fresh water pot of the water you want to turn on your water pump don't turn on your water pump and use the city water that's already pressurized all right we're all set up for power and water to camp let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside unit starting on the off camp side over here with your generator prep storage area here your hot water heater cable and satellite inlet again your power below well, that we've got our low point drain city water connect fresh water connect and black tank flush we'll talk about that black tank flush when leaving the campsite we're on the side of your unit black gray and gray and black tanks there's where we'll pull all those at and drain those out. We also have a fresh water drain right there when using potable water. That's where you dump that out. Continuing down on your off camp side, your fueling station. It's all locked. And there's where you turn on your fuel pump. Your deck is already set up. I'll show you how to set that back up. You also prep for a backup camera up there on top device you can purchase from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle giving you a backup camera for the unit come to your off camp side or your campsite I want to mention on your awning you have a pitch adjust your picnic table is down there and it starts raining pull down on that that will pitch you pitch away your awning and run all your rainwater down to this end works from the other end as well there's a door for your garage you have an outdoor shower here one tanning cable over here with a tv mount i'm gonna hook a tv up outside there's a couple outdoor speakers this is a vent and access to your fridge it's a flue for your furnace if you run your furnace to clear that it will get rather warm and make sure nothing's blocking it and back around here your pass-through storage and here you do have a vacuum hook up your hose here Turn that on. This is one of two tables that set up your garage. I'll show you how to set them up shortly. The spray port you can use over in your docking station. And here is a do docking light to the front of your unit. Battery disconnect. That'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. That'll disconnect all the battery power to the unit. Your propane does have a cover and a regulator. See it's red. I turn your gas on. It turns green. And that about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look inside your unit. Now this is a big oversized handle for getting in. First thing I like to point out in every unit is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows where the fire extinguisher is located in case of an emergency. Right by your entry doorway. Immediately to your left as you come in is your control panel. So here's where you check your tanks. Your brand new battery. There's your fresh water button. I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. And your black and gray tanks. Uh, here's where you'll start your generator if you ever hook the generator up here. One living room slide. Here's where your fuel pump cut off your tank heaters if you're in inclement weather water pump if you're using potable water and your water heater uh, lights accent ceiling step lights and awning light then your awning extend and retract you see in your awning we've ran it out just until that black bar can be seen and your flap has fallen down to 90 degrees it will extend past that so make sure you keep an eye on it as you're running it out. Another thing about this awning, make sure your door is not in the way, opening or closing it. It has to be closed a little bit. If it's open too far, it'll catch this pretty close over here.
And as your awning runs in, I'll shut off your awning light and step light. Continue the tour through the unit. To my right as soon as I come in. Here's your bedroom lights. Here's your thermostat. Let's turn the air on here. There goes your AC. You shut your AC off. See that shuts off quickly. Now I'm going to go to your thermostat, your furnace, turn that on. Now that kicked on. I'm going to shut that off. You'll notice that the thermos, um, excuse me, the thermos, the furnace fan takes a little bit longer to shut off. Connex TV, turn that on here. There's your TV working. So that, your sound system remote for that as well. Just gonna turn it on here. Okay, just shut it back off. Turn it on. Turn the volume up. Speakers on, A and B. I get much for channels, because we're indoors. Or you can play your music indoors, outdoors, or both. Fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. Yeah, I can go through and show you all the pretty colors. But the biggest thing, folks, is the heat. If you are chilly in the morning or evening and you're plugged into the campsite, instead of using up your gas and turning your uh, furnace on, go ahead and crank the heater up on this and it'll get a toast in here in no time. We have lighting over here for your slide sofa. Come over here to your kitchen area. Your Dometic fridge, let's open that up, go up top. Turn it on. Lift, push that in, we are on auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Lift that up and you're strictly gas. Here's the furnace just shut off. Here's your self-explanatory microwave. Do you have a individual lighting here? Your glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Turn your panel light on, turn this to light, see it turns to red, there's your flame. Same thing on your oven, just turn this to the flame, light it here, no need for a pilot light anymore, then just set it to the desired temperature. You have a hand crank open exhaust up there. On the side of your kitchen area here is an access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Ton of 15s in there. See a 30, I highly recommend you have a handful of those with you when you go camping. To the right of that, on toward the floor on in your hallway, is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention it's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day boondocking, nothing plugged in charging your battery, use that battery disconnect up front in that storage in order to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. Right in here in the hallway. We'll go into the bathroom. Just mentioning here is your 110 with GFCI reset. You do have a max air vent. Just hit on. It will open and turn the fan on. Or you can individually open and close it and change the number four different settings on your fan. Or shut it off. It'll shut the fan off and close itself. Before we're going back into the garage, let's head up here to your bedroom real quick. here USB ports and 110 on both sides your doors they are sliding doors so make sure that you snap these back for travel same thing over here make sure that is good and snapped in there when you're traveling your bed let's head back into the bunk area your garage, excuse me. Come back into the garage. So you got your separate thermostat back here. Run through that real quick. Turn on this AC. I'll 
strip that off. Let's turn on your heat. And now that's running. Over here on the wall, you're all prepped for a TV. You got a backer here with cable 110. This is all individual lighting up here. Here's your bunk. Let's show you how that works. So over here you have a bunk control. I'm just gonna hit down. Down's gonna bring down both of them. You see this top bunk will stop here in a second and this will continue down. So these uh, sofas here, or seating areas, they kind of jackknife. Let's see if I can show you this with one hand. Kind of lift up on the front, lift up on the back at the same time. Just that quickly that goes up. Repeat the process over here. And these will go lower. Now that these are down, I'm going to show you quickly how to set your table up. So you'll remove these. You see you've got that little slat in there. On your table legs, on one end is a piece of metal. You want to turn that all the way to the left so that it's open. You line that metal up with this slot. Once that's in there, twist to the right. And if you miss, start over. Normally that will lock that right in there, so turn it all the way to the left. Get it in there. Couple twists to the right, and you're locked in. Put that in there. There we go. So do the same thing with the other leg, and then just set the table up on top. Take that back out. Just on top of those. Now for your bunk. Let's say we want to leave the top bunk up and bring the chairs down. Lay these back down. Now if you do use this for a bed, make sure to put those down. Once we got that down, we're going to take this little asp right here and flip it forward on all four corners. What that's going to do is that is going to lock your top bunk up there. And lastly this one. So now, we come over here and lift the bed up. Run that all the way up here. So now as we get to the top, you're going to hear a click. That just locked the top bunk in. So now, you can individually bring down the bottom. Run that back up. And if you want that top bunk to come down, just go around to all four corners and flip this forward. Let me show you how to set your deck up. All right, so I'm gonna close this deck up. And then hook here. So the way this one goes, it's gonna fold inside. And then fold up over it. Snap right here to snap on. Keep the process on the other side. That will hold that here. Keep that folding up on you. One concern here is making sure you tuck your cables in. Two people doing this. Everything went in. Make sure you lock these up. 
Okay, so now let's act like we're leaving the campsite. Doors and drawers. That is uh, my saying. I want you to make sure that all doors and drawers in the unit are closed, that nothing's going to impede this slide from coming in. I'm going to go ahead and shut off my main ceiling lights here, because then I can walk through the unit and see any lighting I may have forgotten. Bathroom's all off. Bunk area. All these again are individuals. A light here somewhere. There it is. Now we can turn our ceiling light back on and bring in our slide. Slides in, shut off your ceiling the lights, exit your unit. Lock and deadbolt your door. Lift and turn this handle. Fold up your steps. At this point, we're going to bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Unhook our power, our water, and our cable. And head on up to the dump station. Oh, excuse me, we're going to dump some low point drains now if we are at a campsite that's where you dump those and after you are dry docking a couple of fresh water tanks there to dump hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station now park accordingly your dump is going to be right in front of your tires on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle <coughs> hook up the hose comes to your convenience pack and the first thing we're going to pull is black so it's telling us our black is all the way to the left. Let's pull our left handle. Now after it sounds like that sewage is no longer draining, leave that handle open. Come up here, again with your water pressure regulator. Hook up the hose at the dump station to this tank flush. Turn on that hose, let it run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook that hose, close it. Close this black handle. Pull your first gray, next one to the right. And if it sounds like that's no longer draining, go to your next gray to your right. Those are your wastewater. So those are cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. Now I'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Take it stored in a nice convenient place. And head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase of this Hyperlite. Hope you enjoy it for many years to come. Happy camping.